Nkulego, very good morning and thanks so much for joining us. What's the IFP's response to the VBS report? Well, the IFP is not surprised because corruption continues to be the order of the day in this country without any consequences for anybody who has been found to be criminal. And so we see what has happened at VBS as part of a broader political syndicate which is determined to pillage this country at every given opportunity with a, a view to accumulate wealth for strategically well-placed individuals um, in this country. And so what has come out of the VBS report is indicative of that prevailing reality in this country. We do call, on, of course, on the law enforcement agencies, particularly the anti-corruption task team, um, to speedily um, probe matters further because uh, the report was limited in terms of its own terms of reference, but it couldn't, couldn't do. But it forms a good basis for in further investigation and successful prosecution of all those who are implicated um, in this matter. And it's precisely for this reason why the IFP has always championed and called for the establishment of a corruption court to deal with allegations of transgressions of the PFMA, MFMA, Treasury regulations and Auditor General findings um, and reports such as this one um, into VBS because we believe that in the absence of consequences, corruption will continue to be the order of the day in South Africa. How will that help if there's a code that is established when uh, these particular uh, transactions that we're talking about, massive amounts of money going to individuals, uh, were done in the pretext of following procedure? Well, of course, every corrupt act is done under a pretext of um, following procedure. It's placed under a guise or procedure is just used as a ruse to actually um, funnel money to the pockets of individuals. And so this specialized court will actually must be equipped with the necessary technical skills insofar as um, those matters are concerned. You can get to the bottom of it. For example, we need to looking at VBS now, all the money that has come out, the 1.9 billion, we need to now track where it went after it came out of VBS. We need to follow the money to the bank accounts because one of the other things we are calling for is the IFP is that a national task team be set up as a matter of urgency to investigate the banking practices um, of South African banks because there does seem to be collusion in so far as protecting the interests um, of certain individuals at the expense of the country. So it cannot be that money just willy-nilly lands into people's bank accounts without it raising the red flags of the receiving banks and without them reporting it. So the fact that um, the, there is a, a dark um, shadow in so far as transparency is concerned in the banking sector of this country is cause for concern. And so those are all the things that need to be investigated. But the specialized court would go very far in ensuring that the speedy prosecution, speedy investigation, because all these cases are getting stuck in the bottlenecks of already overburdened courts. So we need to take them out of that space um, and prosecute them parallel to that so that um, they do not become cold and we can be able to actually recover money. To investigate and prosecute a matter 10 years after it happened um, becomes nothing more than a ceremonial prosecution as opposed to a consequential one. Why do you call this a political syndicate at the expense of, of sounding simplistic? The, the money that has been taken here has been proven to uh, go towards uh, funding lavish lifestyles as opposed to uh, political well, outcomes. Well, I mean, the, 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 the EFF through the brother of its deputy president is implicated, and I know, of course, people will say it's just a brother. But the reality is that this country has made a tendency of associating relatives with political office, and we know the culture of nepotism which continues to prevail in South Africa, so we can't be ignorant to that fact. So that's the first political space. The ANC, of course, is um, thinking in the mess of this bank, particularly through its PEC um, in Limpopo. And thirdly, the, um, the money that went to, to the free state um, highly implicates the ANC secretary general is Mahashule. So 
at the surface of it, you can immediately see, you can connect the dots that these were political players um, who are very clear in, in terms of what it is that they wanted to achieve, and the fact that we have a situation where the political outcomes of the NASRA conference of the ANC were strategically positioned to continue the corruption at that bank. And the fact that the desired outcomes did not arise sort of derailed those processes tells you that the political um, connection is very, very deep. And the fact that you have municipalities against advice, particularly coming from Treasury and inconsistent with the MFMA, doing business with this bank. And it, therefore, that as well um, requires investigation, particularly around the municipal managers and the political office bearers of those uh, municipalities to do a um, lifestyle audits to check Mr. in terms Mr. of how it is that money happened, got to them. Mr. Klingo, just a point here, and then this might just be my own uh, uh, um, grapple, grappling to get around this point where you say the political outcomes of the ANC conference, uh, if they had been different, this would have continued. Are we not well, casting aspersions on Gosas and Adamine Zuma on things that we are not certain about? She has proven uh, in her political uh, career to... to not necessarily, she has, she has not officially uh, uh, been, been tainted with corruption. Well, what what, do you call what evidence do we have that she would have continued along this line? Well, I, I think that it would be um, very generous of you to say that about the minister, and I hope I know negative views towards her, but I don't think we should paint her as an angel, particularly when she found herself drowning in the... I am not necessarily saying she's an she angel. Was minister of Health. And, and secondly, we, we cannot be ignorant to the allegations that has been made. All we are saying is investigate it for what it's worth. Absolutely. Um, and, if it, and if it vindicates it, then all good and well. But when you look at the fact that the VBS debacle is deeply steeped in political interference, yeah. you cannot in good faith um, forego that particular assertion that Prasa would have been used as a conduit to rescue a bank um, through, um, because of the financial mismanagement and corruption which had taken place there. And if it places her at the center of it, I would challenge her to um, actually be at the forefront of clearing her own name. The Limpopo province, along with the Eastern Cape, have been said to be some of the poorest provinces in the country. Does this kind of revelation perpetuate that situation? Well, of course it does, um, because here you have a classic example of where political office bearers directly stole from the poorest of the poorest of this country, who had used the VBS bank to maintain and sustain their livelihoods. It's a classic case, really, um, of Robin Hood um, by day, and then the same Robin Hood stealing from his beneficiaries by night. Um, and that is what has happened. Of course, it's not the first time that a bank... Um, of this nature has found itself at the receiving end of corruption. If you look at how the ANC in Gozul Natal pillaged the Itala Bank through the buying of farms and all sorts of other things that they did, there is an indication that um, VBS is not an isolated incident but forms part and parcel of a broader agenda of corruption. So what are the IFP suggestions going forward? You've spoken well, about law enforcement agencies doing their work. Well, we are calling on the um, law enforcement agencies want to do their work, and we are calling on all those who have been jumping up and down, particularly in the last few days, about um, political family connections to go to the plate and walk their talk um, and hold mm -hmm. themselves accountable. Mm -hmm. um, and furthermore, we're calling for political parties to strengthen their own internal political capacities to deal with corruption and to hold their office bearers accountable. Um, we in the IFP do not shy away um, from actually dealing with people who have been implicated in any acts of corruption because we believe that in the absence of consequences, this continues. That's why we're calling for the National Task Team to investigate um, the banking practices of South African banks and the relationships that they have insofar as this ongoing protection is concerned and the establishment I'm gonna of have the to come in there. Court. Thank you so much for your time. Kulego Tlengwa is the uh, chairperson of the IFP National Youth Brigade. We continue our live coverage and reaction from different stakeholders and we go back now to my